words. Amen. Give Lord the Lord a big hand clap. <laughs> yes, Lord. Didn't Sister Bree do a good job? Amen. So Amen. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Father God, we just love you so much. I love you so much. Father, I'm so grateful to be allowed to pastor such a wonderful church with such wonderful brothers and sisters. Not only are they members of the church, but they're my friends, they're my family. But Father God, I don't stand here as a professional preacher. I stand here as your servant. And I desperately rely on you, Holy Spirit, to use me. Father, my heart's desire is that your people be fed and blessed. That they may grow into the mighty children of God they're called to be. The mighty warriors, victorious in every battle, glorifying you in every step. Holy Spirit, teach through me today. Let your people be empowered with revelation knowledge. Let the power of that knowledge transform from glory to glory. And let them walk in the weight, the kabod of your glorious presence and spirit. Let this spirit of power rest upon them like a mantle. And as they walk out of this place today, let them be changed and never be the same. And I pray it in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Now before we're seated, let's on camera, congregationally, bring Pastor Terry before the Lord. Brother Terry, we know that next Sunday, you are going to be in Pakistan. So we want to prepare the way. We want to prepare the atmosphere, yes. and we want to release the protection and the anointing on you before you step foot in the mission field. Now, Father, we lift up your man, your servant, your yes, apostle, Jesus. Terry Bahumas, to you. In this place, in the spirit of unity, where many, many, many of us are joined together in faith and agreement. Where one sits a thousand to flight, two sits ten thousand to flight. Yes. As a congregation, we declare that every principality and power yes. parts yes. its place and position yes. before Christ in your servant. As he comes off the plane, let the principalities and powers bow and leave. Yes. yes. Let spirits bow and flee. Let the dominion of your kingdom be established as your man and your servant yes, preaches yes. and show forth and proclaims the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Father, we call forth that pastor right now yes. that you have favored and that you're already touching his heart. As many, many unsaved come and be saved. As many sick and afflicted come and be healed. Let your grace and your glory and your favor fall on that man in Pakistan. Let the spirit of a pastor rise up in him. Let your glory and your favor shine on him. Let him be raised up. Let a church be raised up. Let the second kingdom and power, kingdom purpose, pointing to Jesus' church, be established in Jesus' name. Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 seated if you can. I kind of feel like dancing myself. Hallelujah. That could be an ugly thing, but I feel like it. <laughs> There's nothing worse than an old white boy trying to dance. Unless you're anointed, don't do it. It could cause injuries. <laughs> what is that they say? You know you're old when your back goes out more than you do? <laughs> my back does not go out, praise God. Praise God. And I am not old. My, new, my youth is renewed like an eagle. I'm 32 years younger than my chronological age, 
Every cell in my body is charged with solely life and divine health. Amen. The top of my head Amen. to the soles of my feet. Amen. Sickness and disease cannot touch me. Yes. I'm 32 years younger in ability, Amen. power, strength, endurance than I was when I was 25 years old. Amen. 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 Give me this mountain. I don't feel my age and I feel younger every day. You know how you stay young? Stay excited about God. Yes. I'm serious. I still have vision. Amen. I still have vision far Amen. beyond what I've ever shared with you folks. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you talk about it? Because right now we need to take this mountain. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Don't worry about bridges you're not crossing yet, but God has shown me many, many, many things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what we're going to talk about today is part of that. The Holy Spirit series we're going to look at today, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of restoration. Hallelujah. The spirit of restoration. Now, if you studied and you were looking at some of the verses we looked at yes, last time in Genesis, I'm going to have to talk very fast. Say, talk fast, Pastor. Talk fast, Pastor. Right, Pastor. We'll believe God to anoint you. We'll believe God, God to anoint, anoint you. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can feel the presence of God in here. I, I mean, Amen. I can feel the tangible presence of God in here. I've, I've entered into an anointing right now, so hopefully the, the spirit of revelation will touch the spirit of expectancy and you get something at the level of what God's wanting to say. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Last week we looked over in Genesis where God said, let us make man in our image, let them restore and replenish the earth. Amen? That was the Amen. first hint that the spirit of God is the spirit of restoration. Amen. Amen? Amen. But I also said something last week that kind of, he, he saw me tilt my head because I could sense in the spirit a couple of you went tilt, tilt, tilt because it, it was a little bit challenging. So I'm going to go back very quickly. Look at 1 John. Not, I'm sorry, Gospel of John. I said that last week too. I think. The Gospel of John. And we're going to get revelation knowledge if you're hungry. Amen? Amen. Amen. And part of that revelation is going to come out today too. So let's move very quickly. Have Bible drill and Hungry hearts to grab as the Spirit speaks and releases understanding. Amen? Amen? Last week, I said that when you're born again, you're born again of a seed that is brought forth into you by the Holy Ghost <coughs> and impregnates the new life into you, just like the Virgin Mary. Amen? Amen? Amen. It was a supernatural event where Jesus had to become reduced down to the size of a sperm seed of God carried by the Holy Ghost and overshadowed Mary and impregnated her with Jesus himself. Amen? Amen? Now we know that God is omnipotent. Jesus is omnipotent. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Amen? So the Holy Spirit's here. He's in Moscow right now. Here he's in Pakistan right now. But in the essence of what you need to understand that yes, Jesus still was omnipresent. Not omnipotent. He is omnipotent, but I was looking for omnipresent more than one place at a time. He's all over. Amen? Jesus is teaching here today. The Holy Spirit's teaching here. But he's also teaching everywhere where his children are gathered together to hear the word. Amen? Amen. But is he, figure, is he physically, literally here right now? Yes. We don't know how to explain that, but it's a fact. So was Jesus reduced, absolutely clear down to one seed and impregnated into Mary? Yes. Was it a tremendous expression of faith in his father to do that? Yes, because we look in... In the world where it said he stripped himself of his powers and became a human being. So whether you want to argue about him being omnipresent or not, for all practical purposes, he left the throne, became a seed, and trusted God to raise him up and keep him safe. That's Amen. just an absolute fact. Amen? Amen? It also says that he learned obedience. That he became subject to his father and mother, the very people he created and breathed life into. Amen? Amen. That will help you sometimes as you're growing not to become haughty and think, well, I know as much as as pastor, you may. But there's a there's a there's Jesus taught us an example. The very people he created, he came subject to. Amen. He knew more than them at twelve than they ever knew in their combined lifetimes, but he still subjected himself to them for the appropriate time of the Father. Yes. Amen. That's the test when you're spiritually growing. Amen? Amen. Now let's look at something. I'm going to show you something here that's going to help solidify that real quickly, but you have to 
get that hunger up there. Are you hungry? Amen. 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 Did you come to expect some, expecting something? Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Look at the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. This will also shed light on that. It's a verse that you probably read a hundred times and never really actually grabbed this. But I want to bring it out for clarity and revelation knowledge. Are you there? Amen. But as many, say as many, Amen. as received him. What's that mean, as received him? Accepted him. How many of you have accepted Christ? Amen. Amen. It means the exact same thing. Basically, it's saying as many that actually allow him into their hearts and become born again. What? To them gave he the power to become. Now, how many of you know you don't become born again? You get born again. You're just, Jesus come into the heart of my Savior. Boom, boom, you're born again. You don't start becoming born again. Come on. Did you catch that? Yes. Come on. And who's he talking about? He's talking to the people that believed in him. That makes him saved. To those people, they received the divine power to become something. So after they believed and received him, they received power to become. Hallelujah. Are you understanding the progression? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it makes sense in just a second, instead of reading over this, if you actually study it like a good friend. To as many as received him, to them gave he power. That word power in the King James and my center column means right and privilege, ability and influence, amen, amen. to become sons of God. You don't become saved, you get saved. You become a son and daughter of God. Why? Because that son and daughter of God right there doesn't mean baby. It means technon. That word right there in the Greek is not we us, little children. Like John later says in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, my little children. Because he's John the aged. Right here saying to those that begin believe in Jesus, God gives them the privilege, the right, and the power to become grown up children. Amen. So the whole goal isn't just getting saved. You get impregnated with God, with Jesus himself. You become a baby in Christ. Everything else is up to you receiving the power of God to grow up. Amen. 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 And all of that trans all of that transition, now watch, from be receiving him, being empowered to become somebody in him is all up to your willingness to flow and receive and work with the operation and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. To them gave you the power to become the sons of God. means technon, sons, daughters, child, not infant, not baby. Amen? You're a babe in Christ when Jesus comes into your heart and saves you. You grow into becoming a teenage level matured son and daughter of God. Amen? Amen? How? By God's power working in you, receiving the privileges of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, which uh, sons and daughters, even to them which believe on his name. So he's telling you that the receiving is the believing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Same subject. Amen? Amen? You're not born again an adult. You're not born again a teenager. You're born again a little child. A seed. Amen. Now remember I said, now watch this. Which are born not of the blood, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen? Now remember, look over here at Philippians chapter 2. I have quoted that you need to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians chapter 2. And this is just to lay the foundation before we go on further. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Philippians 2, 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Who's he talking to? He's talking to saints. He's talking to what? Saved folks Amen. that are instructed, don't stay an infant seed. Work that salvation you have received out into manifestation and maturity. Amen. How many of you know 
Christians that have been saved 20 years and don't know zip about the Bible. Amen. And live carnal, unstable, emotional lives like people that aren't even saved. Anybody know folks like them? Yes. Absolutely. That actually is more common than mature, grown up, able to be responsible for kingdom affairs Christians. Amen. It's much more carnal. It's much more common to run into carnal, infant children of God than mature sons and daughters of God. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you got to work that out. Jesus is in here. Christ in you. The hope of God's glory being seen. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So this growing up in the Lord should be something of utmost seriousness. Amen. He said a fearful and trembling thing. Amen. Don't Cadillac through your relationship with God. You should take this with a trembling fearfulness. I need to grow up and become what God created a new life in me for. He created me for a purpose. And I got to take that trembling and fearfully serious. This whole, whole hallelujah, what's it to you? Bless your darling heart mentality is anti-Christ. It's anti-Christ growing up in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you realize that, say with love, much leather, rather you stay a baby Christian, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, than to become a fully equipped, fully mature, empowered with the presence of God, child of God, able to bring destruction to the kingdom of darkness. He's happy you stand immature. So what's going to fight more in your flesh than, than the other? Calm down. Don't get too serious about this. Don't push yourself too hard. God understands. We all sin every day. It's, you're saved by grace. Just relax. No. That's what Satan wants you to think. Amen. God says work that salvation has started in you. Not that you're going to lose going to heaven, but you're going to he lose heaven in you. Yes. Come on. And heaven in you being brought to others. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So you got to take this growing up in the Lord stuff with fearful, trembling seriousness. Work it out. Work that, that kingdom deposit out of you. Work Christ in you. A glorious manifestation out of you. Because that's what you were created for. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 That's what you were born again for. Amen. 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 Look at the next verse. It'll, it'll, it'll explain that. For it is God which worketh in you. Now, Christ is in me, and God wants to work in me. What for? Both to will and to do what? His good pleasure. Doesn't say a thing about you getting what you want. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. What is God working in you for? To will and to do. Nope. You said it, Chris. The very first thing you got to understand, get, get the revelation of this. What is God working in inside you for? His will. Amen. For you to will His will. Amen. So he's, His first working in you to grow up is to want to please Him and do His will. Amen. Until that becomes in you, you're still what? A baby seed in the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. An infant. What can an infant do for me? Not a thing. It relies completely on me doing for it. Right. Amen. Amen. Doesn't make it a bad baby. Doesn't make it a reject. You don't throw them away. That's accepted. But the goal is anybody that's got a 40-year-old man in diapers sitting in a, in a playpen is a corrupt parent. The whole process of your life is growing up. Amen. Pushing yourself beyond your, your, your comfort <coughs> level. Babies don't like getting rid of pacifiers. They don't like getting rid of their diapers. They don't like being made to walk. They don't like being any stage of growth. They don't like, but it's required. Amen. Amen. So what's the first thing God's going to start working in me? To will His will. Amen. To will. To, I want to please God, and I want to do what pleases God. Amen. Amen. Now when that doesn't enter in 80% of the body of Christ... Something is destructively and demonically wrong. Amen. 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 Smith Wigglesworth used to say this. 
in the spirit, I'm ten times stronger and bigger and larger than what you see on the outside. Hallelujah. You're seeing this body in the spirit. I'm ten times bigger, stronger, and taller. Why? Because his inner man was fully developed. That's why God doesn't, and Satan doesn't look at the outward appearance. They look at the glory within. Hallelujah. And if there is no glory, what's that mean? You're a target. And an easy target. Amen? Amen. Those things ought not so to be. So the first thing the Spirit of God starts working in you to work out of you is His will and a will to do His will. Amen. So I, Amen. The first show, listen, the first show that you're really growing in the Lord is I want to do what God created me for. Until that comes out of you, you're still in diapers. Amen. You really know when you're growing, when you say, God, what did you make me for? I want to, I want to fulfill the purpose of my life. Boom! Amen. God's been doing a work in you. And then he starts working the ability to do it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look over at the Gospel of John, chapter 16. Gospel of John, chapter 16. Hallelujah. 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 Make it uh, chapter 15, verse 26. Glory be to God. Now we're going to tie in this, this wonderful God of the Holy Spirit and his operation, and his wonderful, glorious ministry that so many people are completely ignorant of. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. John chapter 15, verse 26. Jesus is speaking, and he says, But when the Comforter, say Holy Ghost. Holy, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. When the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. So he's a gift from the Father sent by Jesus. Amen? Amen. When I was a, a four-square gospel pastor, they called it the four-square gospel because of the four building block tenets of faith of Jesus Christ. Christ the Savior, Christ the Healer, Christ the Baptizer with the Holy Ghost, and Christ the soon-coming King. Amen? Amen? So their whole relationship as a ministry and as a denomination was that you had to understand believe, receive, and build your life on those four basic tenets of knowledge of Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. He's my healer. He's my baptizer of the Holy Ghost. Because he said, I will send from the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he's a soon coming king. He's coming back. And you better live like somebody that's going to see him come back for you one day. Amen? Amen. 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 But when he comes, watch. What's the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit? Which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. That's the primary, number one ministry of the Holy Spirit. He shall teach, testify, and proclaim Jesus Christ. Amen. So wouldn't the devil love for you to think the Holy Spirit is not needed in your life? You'll never grow in Christ. Right. Now to show you how critically important that is, look over at chapter 16, verse 12. Are you ready? It's right across the page of my Bible. I have yet many things. We covered this last week. But it's after, now you're going to start seeing there's a problem here. Watch. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. You can't endure them. You can't receive them. Now, folks, look at Pastor for just a second. How many of you think, oh, my God, if Jesus came here and taught me in person, then I'd really grow. The truth of the matter is you probably wouldn't grow one bit more than you are now. These apostles slept, walked, ate, ministered, performed miracles with them side by side and could only go so far. He said, I can't teach you anymore. It's beyond your ability. Listen, is Jesus the best teacher ever created? Yes. Amen. They called him rabbi, one of his ministry. He is the fivefold ministry. He is the supreme teacher. But there is only so much he could teach. There's a problem here, isn't it? So it doesn't matter if Jesus showed up here in person. That's no guarantee you're going to grow. He could only take the disciples so far. And he didn't say, say something weird. He said, I can't teach you anymore. You're not able to learn from me anymore. Now it takes the Holy Spirit 
to testify of me more than, you're, than you have now. So was the problem Jesus' ability to teach or their ability to learn? So listen, it's not how good the pastor is per se, and you better be sitting under a good pastor, a word-based pastor, a faith pastor, a holy, a, absolutely a Holy Ghost pastor. I can be the best, and how many of you have seen it in this church? I can preach stuff that you go, my God, I've never heard that before. That's exciting. I'm turned on and other people fall asleep. Right. What's the problem? My delivery, like secret sensitive preachers think? No. My style, like politically correct pastors think? My performance, like what's popular all over the body of Christ? No, the people. Right. Amen. You're only going to learn as much as you're able to receive. Now listen, how many of you know Pastor Darlene could have a PhD in algebra? But as she's standing there teaching me in Vietnamese, she could be the best teacher in Vietnam. But if I don't speak Vietnamese, I'm not going to learn one lick about algebra. Come on. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to show you something that will tie all this together here in just a minute. Look at this. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall what? Hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine things pertaining of me, and shall show it unto you. So here you are. Jesus can't teach me anymore, but when the Holy Spirit comes, He's going to hear teaching from heaven. And what the Holy Spirit hears from heaven, from Jesus and Father, he's going to repeat and teach me. Hallelujah. So now for me to learn more about Jesus, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hasn't taught you this. My Father in heaven revealed it to you by the Spirit. Jesus said it's better for me to leave because there's a transition. going. To, I can't teach your carnal brains anymore. You can't receive it. It's not my ability to teach. It's in your ability to hear. I'm going to say it's going to knock your socks off. Are you ready? Amen. So when Darlene's trying to teach me algebra in Vietnamese, it's not her ability to teach. It's my ability to hear and understand. Amen. 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 We've seen that in every church. People grow. People fall away. People grow. People never change. Is, is it me? No. It's where they're at. And their ability to hear and receive. But it goes beyond that. Are you ready? Yes. What's the Holy Spirit going to do? He's going to hear from heaven and teach it. Right. He's going to hear from heaven and repeat it. He's going to hear and see from heaven and show it. Amen? Amen. That's the necessity that we needed because Jesus said, I can't go any further. This is what it's going to take. You're going to have to get from heaven through the Spirit to go further in me and with me. Hallelujah. Well, I don't never grow. How's your relationship with the Holy Ghost? I don't need no Holy Ghost. Okay. I just, right. I, I think biblically we already see you absolutely need the Holy Ghost. Yes. You'll never grow up without the Holy Ghost. You won't learn one lick about Jesus without the Holy Ghost. And you'll never get taught by heaven without the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. That's why you got people that you love, that you know they're saved, they quote they're saved, they have a Bible and don't understand a lick about it because they don't believe in the Holy Ghost. It stays a blinded mystery to them. Why? Because they're not able to learn from the kingdom realm, from the Spirit teaching them. Why? Different language. Amen. Amen. Now you've got to have a spirit language and spirit ears to be taught of the Spirit to understand Jesus Christ the Word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now look at Acts chapter 3. Man, that's good teaching. I'm glad I came to church. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3, look at verse 18 very quickly. This is right after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Peter comes out on the balcony. All these people from <coughs> foreign countries are all gathered around. Listen to what he says. Verse 18. But those things which God before had showed... By the mouth of the prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Amen? Okay. What did he just say? Come on, folks, stand step with me.
but those things which God before today has shown by the mouths of the old covenant prophets that Christ should suffer, he has fulfilled. What did he just say? Everything that was prophesied about Jesus, Jesus fulfilled. So what's that mean? Jesus was here. Jesus fulfilled it. Jesus is not here. Amen. He fulfilled it. Amen. Are you ready? This sounds silly, but you got one, two, three. Get it in time and parameters before you'll understand it. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, be saved, that your sins be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now watch. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restoration of all things. Now, where's Jesus now? Heaven. Who's in heaven? So that means heaven has received him until what? The time of restitution of all things. That's absolutely right, Pastor Chris. Jesus is in heaven, not just counting down the calendar and looking at the clock of heaven, but waiting for something to be restored. Till the times of restoration be fulfilled. And the last enemy for us to overcome in this restoration is death itself. Hallelujah. You'll know Jesus is turning the doorknob and taking a step toward us when you start hearing stories of all over the United States and all over the world, Christians, just average Christians, raising the dead. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now, you certainly aren't going to get there not believing in the Holy Ghost or any of the gifts or the fruit of the Holy Ghost or any of that mumbo-jumbo spiritual stuff that 80% of the body of Christ don't believe. But he is up there until the times of restoring. From what? The fall. It's not enough for you to be saved. God's waiting for the restoration of his kingdom. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Until the heaven is manifested and manifold in the believers, he ain't coming. Amen. Now that doesn't mean we turn all the governments of the earth into kingdom governments and Christians. But it means the children of God have to show forth the kingdom of heaven in demonstration and manner without reservation or limitation. In other words, the work, listen, it all ties together. The works that I will do, you will do also, and greater, because I go to be with the Father, and there's more of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where he cleansed three, four, five, six labor, uh, lepers, we should be cleansing <coughs> millions of lepers. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Until we are walking down the street, and blind eyes are open, deaf ears are open, the lame walk like the shadow of Peter, and Paul in the prayer clause, that should never have stopped. Hallelujah. It was taught out of you. Hallelujah. 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 Until that's back up where Jesus and his works without hesitation or reservation or limitation are seen freely in the believers, he's not coming back. So what's he waiting on? He's waiting on you. To cooperate with the Holy Ghost to do the works of Jesus and see Jesus, understand Jesus, and show Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that's good teaching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive. Did they receive him? Yes. yes. Until, when you come back, Jesus... The times of restitution, that's the exact same word, look it up in the Greek, restoration. Till the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 2 now. Look at Acts chapter 2, are you ready? Amen. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord in one place. Isn't it? Is it? Do you think it's important to gather together? Amen. Do you think it's important to have a place to be brought together as a family? Yes. Absolutely. Why? It's conditional for the presence of the Holy Ghost. This, the devil loves this anti-Christ 
anti-church spirit that you just stay home, God understands, church is outdated, church is done away with, we've progressed past that. That's all anti-Christ spirit. And you'll never walk in the power and the majesty and the understanding of Jesus through the Holy Ghost sitting in your living room by yourself. Hallelujah. 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 And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, in one place, not where everybody else chose. Come on. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire. Hallelujah. Praise God. Like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What's the number one manifestation externally seen, heard, and experienced that the Holy Spirit has come in you? Tongues. Tongues. Now just think for just a minute. Why would the first expression of the presence of the third person of the Trinity coming into your body and into your life be a new language. Why that? So we don't even see and hear. It's even more than that. that. It is all that, Pastor. But it's even deeper than that. Are you ready? Yes, yeah. sir. This will change your whole life. The first evidence, natural evidence, visible, there it is, evidence that the Holy Spirit has indwelled you was a different language. That could be just random. There has to be a kingdom purpose for that. Amen. Jesus said the Holy Spirit's going to come and teach you more about me that you can't receive now. Okay, the Holy Spirit's here, but how come I'm not receiving more? Something had to happen in your language. Genesis chapter 11. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Man's already fallen. Generations have taken place. Man is separated from God. God's trying to work out restoration through his prophets. And now we've got this a powerful, powerful story that people still don't understand. Come on. Genesis chapter 11. Let's start at chapter 10, verse 8. And Cush begat Nimrod. Anybody remember that name? Yes, sir. Yes. Raise your hands if you know who Nimrod was. Raise your hands if you don't know who Nimrod was. Well, good. You're going to learn something today. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. And he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Stop there, move to chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language. Uh-oh. Come on. Up until this time, even after the fall, Adam, Cain, Abel, all these genealogies that you read here just before Nimrod, Everybody on the face of the earth spoke one language. Hello. Now watch. Verse 2. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. Evidently, the majority of the population of earth settled in this one area. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and they said one to another, Go to. Go to means, roughly translated, it's kind of like, hey, look, or hey, pay attention, or hey, how about, it's kind of a phraseology. Go to, let us make brick. Hey, listen up, let's get together and make brick, and burn them thoroughly, and they had brick for stones, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, hey, how about, let us build us a city and a tower in that city whose top may reach unto heaven. Now, folks, there's a year-long teaching on 
on Nimrod. Uh, you know, he married his mother. And all this pagan religion and stuff that came out of this relationship with his mother and the Tower of Babel. Look at the, at, at the, uh, which building is it in Europe? It's not, is it the EU building or the uh, European Common Market building? It's patterned exactly, up. it looks like the Tower of Babel. And it's, it's, it's part of the European Union, the one world government. I wonder why they picked the Tower of Babel. Because we're all one species, we all agree. All right, now watch. And let's make a tower that reaches up to heaven. Whose top may go up into the heaven. And let us make us a name. Let us exalt ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Why would they even be worried about that? That's another teaching. And the Lord came down to see the city. Not all visitations of God's personal presence are good. Come on. You better be right when he does show up. Amen. And the Lord came down to, to look at the city and the tower which the children of men built. It was so impressive, it got God's personal attention and visitation. Soak that in. This structure was so impressive, it turned God's attention to it and said, I better go down and check this out in person. That's the kind of results from heaven you can have when everybody speaks the same language. They were able to build something that influenced God to respond. That's all the way through the New Testament. Where two agree as touching anything, right. nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Amen. Now watch. And the Lord came down, looked at the city, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. One in mentality, one in purpose, one in unity, one in agreement, and one in language. Are you getting this at all? Are your little ears starting to perk up now? And, and this they began to do. And now nothing, nothing shall be restrained, or nothing will be impossible from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another speech. How did he defeat this offense to heaven? Tear down the tower? No. Just scatter them? No. Kill a bunch of them? No. Change their language. Amen. How did God destroy the ungodly lawlessness that was assaulting heaven? Change their language. Go to, let us go down, confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, and, and they left off building the city. The construction stopped when the conversation stopped. In other words, there was no progress without communication. There was no building, increasing growth without understanding of one another's language. It is better for you that I go. For when he comes, he'll start teaching you what I can't teach you. Why? Because I have taught your natural mind everything the natural mind can learn. Now you have to have a spirit influence that's taught from the spirit mind to your spirit mind. And it takes the same language. Hallelujah. Holy Amen. Ghost talk. God's amazing. Amen. It doesn't matter how smart she is. If she's speaking Vietnamese and I don't, she benefits me nothing. Amen. doesn't matter how smart he is. If he's Baptist and doesn't believe in the Holy Ghost, he benefits from me nothing. But we're two are gathered together in agreement, in one accord, and they get one language. Now nothing's impossible. The first manifestation was to bring back to mankind from spirit to spirit couldn't happen until they were born again 
Amen. They weren't born again in John until after the cross. I've taught all I can. Now i got to die and be caught back up into heaven that he from heaven can come and continue heaven in you. And the first thing he's got to do is fill you with fire and give you a new tongue. So that now when he talks, you understand you're in agreement and nothing's impossible to those that believe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do you need the Holy Ghost? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. <coughs> now look with me over here at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. How much more time do I got? About three minutes. 1 Corinthians. So we're going to go over. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Are you okay? Amen. Can you hang in there a few more minutes? Amen. amen. Look with me at verse 9. We're going to kill some golden cows along with this, okay? Amen. But as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen? Are we okay? 1 Corinthians 2, 9. 